Welcome to Black, Red, and Blue. I'm AJ, and I'm joined with Steve. Uh, this is pretty much an hour after the game, so this is going to be our gut reaction, kind of like true eye test. We have some stats to look at, but really this is just, boom, pure emotion at this point. And yep. as far as pure emotion, this is super disappointing. This, I, I, I don't know. I, I will give them one a little bit of credit, though. What's one thing that we've said a couple of times before is that we just need to do something different. And guess what? They yeah. came out with more of a defensive formation with the 5-3-2, which they truly did play. And they really did take more of a defensive approach. So they did change things up. And of course, this was a heavily rotated roster as well. I, I, I'm actually kind of excited that they tried to do something different. But unfortunately, yeah. it just yeah, utterly yeah. failed. We, Steve and I have said many times, and I'll see what he thinks too, is that what does City do well in general? And that's oh, he was. defense. So when we came out in defensive formation, I felt like, well, that's not what we needed to reinforce. <laughs> if yes. anything, and I know you don't do yeah. this, but I would rather them play a 2-3-5 and then put everybody on offense. Right. You know, I agree with you. When we were... So, real quick, so... Today being a Wednesday game, the fact that the team's not doing so well and it was super hot, I was checking SeatGeek throughout the day and I saw prices since yesterday dropping for the game for the game. And like at six o'clock I checked and there were tickets on tickets available for twenty bucks a piece. And I looked at my wife and I said, Do you want to go to the game? She said, Take your daughter. So we got tickets very last second and we went. And so we, I was able to take my daughter to her first city match tonight, and that that was awesome. This is her first ever actual city match, so she got to see it at night. She got to see the stadium. We went to the supporter section. That was wild. So, like, she got to see it. But, like, as I'm sitting there, and where my wife drove us, and I'm checking the the FOP mob and the MLS app, because I can't believe it. it's a 5-3-2. And, uh, yeah, like, I it's just like what we were saying is, the one thing this team does not have a uh, an issue with a lot of times is defense. I'm like, why are we in a super defensive posture? And my only guessing is we've got a heavily rotated lineup and a lot of our players are gone. And so I'm thinking Carnell must be worried about giving up goals because we're probably not going to score any. And well, uh, that didn't work tonight because, well, a guy we may talk about wasn't that great tonight like we didn't have any goals but we had two possibly all three given up by the person we would not expect to be given up these goals so like yeah it was shocking to see us in a five three two one i don't think we played that at all last year so i think this may be the first time i we've seen this looks weird on screen like i saw you sent it to me it's a very funky looking very crowded back line and it, i mean it didn't work so it was yeah Seeing that super uh, defensive posture, when we need scores, we need scores bad, and it didn't work. Didn't desperately, happen. yeah. And it, in some ways, if you really want to be analytical about this, it kind of made sense. And here's why I, I, I'm talking about this: is that when you look at our lineup, because they had Yarrow in the middle, middle, who's a true center back. The problem is, is Watts, Markanic. Nierwinski, Totland, they're all wing backs or full backs. So essentially what you're kind of playing is Yarrow in the middle with Markanic and Nierwinski as kind of like full backs. So more of like a true defensive wing back, if you will. And then Totland Watts kind of going forward. So kind of bringing up the ball that way. In some mm -hmm. ways, I, I mean, yeah, a lot of people are going to see that 5-3-2 or 5-3-2. Yeah, 5-3-2. And they're going to say, oh, that's five defensive players. But in reality, the two wingbacks, Totland and Watts, were kind uh, of bringing the ball forward there. Now, the other thing is, yeah. is you uh, know, if you did play, like, let's say a 4-4-2 or 4-2-3-1, who would have been your true second center back? You really didn't have one. So maybe that's why they did this is because we basically had tons of fullbacks and wingbacks and only one really good center back there. So that's maybe a thought. I don't know. I kind of applaud them still. At least I'm looking for some kind of positive here. At least they tried something different. You know, yeah. Yeah, I, I think if the... I think that's something that the team could look at and kind of 
kind of hold their head up high is that they did try something different. They didn't roll out the four two three one again. And we didn't do a four 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 two. And yeah, it's definitely different if the fans are looking for us to try something. Well, here you go, guys. And this is what we got right now. Yeah. Steve, can I tell you something controversial? Uh, are you who I love? And just controversy. Yeah. Right. Can you promise not to cancel me? Because this is going to hurt a little bit. So as everybody knows, Steve is kind enough to basically post for us our uh, uh, survey and basically to see what you guys think about what the team was and how well we did. Not unexpectedly, basically city um, was like in the bottom 20 percent is what basically people felt right. like and colorado was basically in the middle but interestingly obviously offensive man of match pretty much overwhelmingly kojima was the, the player there there were some like single votes for other people including celio which uh, <laughs> makes no sense a uh, defensive man of the match was kind of all over the place but i, I basically the top two vote getters were mechanic and yarrow now, here's a controversial thing, and I actually agree with these two choices. 47% said Kloss and Berkey, 23%. The thing is, is with Berkey, and I'm going to pick on him because he's very quick at yelling at other players about making mistakes. Berkey made two mistakes that actually cost the goals in the loss for this game. And maybe he's he's okay, and we forgive him for doing that because he has saved us so many games. But still, it's something right. to look at. The first goal was one where the ball bounced in front of the net. And at that point, he went into a defensive posture on his line. But the problem is, is when it's in the six-yard box, well, you're not going to save it 1v1 like that. He needed to go there and punch it out, kick it out, head it out, do something. That was his only option there. So that was a mistake. And I get it, it was split-second decision, and he probably regrets it. But the second one, which was, in my opinion, really bad, was when he was tossing the ball. And he, I'm not sure which player it was, but basically he passed it right to our opponent. And the opponent was able to stick out the foot and basically turn the ball around. And it was an easy score. And I, yep. I, I was actually kind of disappointed. Now, Berkey did have one good save, so we'll give him credit. But this is by, by far his worst game. And we'll talk about Klaus in a second. Oh, yeah. What did you see? Because you were, close. like, literally there. Yeah. So the the first goal happened on our way to the game. So I kind of listened to it. I didn't see it. You know, you sent it to me. And, yeah, it looked bad. That second one, it was all him. He threw it. I, I could not begin to pronounce their, their DP's name. He scored all three of their goals tonight. And it just... It just like bounced right off the back of his leg. It was almost like Berkey just threw it out. You, and even in the replay, you can look back and see it's like it, he just threw it out, and it had no one. It was going to no one. I, I almost feel like that was the statement of the night: a ball to nobody, because so many times there were passes, especially on the attacking end. We were lucky enough to be on the attacking end both times, both halves, and it's like a ball would go in to nobody, a pass would go in to nobody. So these players are not playing with each other or they're not practicing well. This goes back to what Berkey had said a couple times this season about the strikers not not finishing. And now it's his turn. And it just went yeah. right to the defender, to the not the defender, but the offensive player. And it's like he was shocked. He could you could he felt the ball hit him in the back of the leg and he turned around like, oh, oh, there's a the ball. Thank you. And he just turned around and just put the biscuit in the basket to borrow from hockey. And it just was bad. And in the stadium, I don't think the fans fully, fully appreciated just how bad of a play that was because we're so used to a St. Berkey always being perfect. It's like they were trying to figure out who else was responsible for that instead of like just saying like our, our goalkeeper was really poor tonight. And if you really want to have some anxiety, go ahead and look at the FOTMA scores. Probably the first time Ooh. ever, Roman Berkey was the lowest rated person on the pitch. Lowest rated. See, there was no one else had a lower rating. 4.8. That's insane. Now, yeah, Berkey can give up 17 goals. But if our attackers are doing nothing on their Ooh. end, 
That's bad. Good segue. Like, Good segue. Yeah, Leuven, Leuven missed a goal, a PK. It was right there. We were we were sitting down as he's getting ready to kick it, and it just dunked <laughs> right off, and then they did nothing. And you it's know. just like every time. It's just nothing happened. And there, I, I heard last year fans complaining about a lack of creativity in the in the final third. There were some nice passes in the box. Like I am going to say, like Kojima is a hell of a player. I am so happy we have him. And he made he made a run from the final from the uh, defensive third all the way to the offensive third and actually carried it and passed it. And I think Klaus missed it. And it's just it was just deflating. And I think that yeah, a pass to no one is what I keep saying for this match tonight. So like. Yeah. No matter exactly. what, we are not scoring. We are now our goal differential is negative seven. That's really bad. And when we're later in the season, if it comes down, if it comes close to getting one of those playoff spots, that goal differential is going to come into play. And if we don't start going on explosion us. soon, we're not even going to have a chance to have a play in for that ninth spot. Yeah. And it's just bad. When we were it, drawing earlier in the season, we could look at our goal differential and say, yeah. We're having a lot of draws, but the goal differential is going to save us because we were scoring goals and we're uh, not. Yeah. I just, I have to mention about the PK about with Leuven. One of the things that annoys me about baseball is when a pitcher walks in a run, right? Because it's self-inflicted injury that didn't need to happen. In my opinion, when it comes to penalty kicks like this, when you don't get a shot on frame, you basically gave a shot that has an XG of 0.7 or so, and you're basically just handing it to the opponent and be like, here, I'm going to miss this because the ball can't go in yep. if you don't shoot it on frame. Like, I guess he literally shot it on frame because he hit the crossbar, right? Literally hit the frame. The, the thing is, is I do like Leuven because he has a strong kick. But in my opinion, I felt like he overkicked that so hard that it just started to sail on him. And a lot of times you see some of the best PK kickers out there, they don't have to whack it with all their strength. It's more about where you put the ball. Finesse. A lot of times. Yeah. And you, yeah, you do need some power and some pace on it. Like, I get that. He's just not but, doing it. Like, he, he went to like 100. It's like on the old school football games when you kick a field goal, you got the little meter that goes up and down yeah. and you got to stop it. And then it's like Leuven yeah. went past yeah. he it. He went red. The red zone. Yeah. Yeah, yeah exactly. he went red. Yeah. And the little Oof. wobble at the end, yeah. Exactly. <laughs> right. Wow. Yeah. About half of our half of our listeners are like literally shaking their head and cracking up right now. And the other yeah, half are too young. They know what <laughs> happened. Yeah. We have to talk about it. you and I were huge defenders of Klaus yep. early in the season. Did our best. And we kept and we kept on saying over and over again, we just need to get Leuven back. We just need to get people to get him the ball. Yep. I need to rewatch this, but I saw many times where the ball got to Klaus and it either got coughed up or there was just like weak contact and no real. Yeah, exactly. And it seemed like that was happening over and over again. He just Is that what doing... you saw too? He's just 100%. not doing it. Yeah. It's every time he would get the ball, it would just go away. He had he had one of his moonshots tonight. He, he took a shot right outside the 18 yard mark and just bombed it over. And in fact, at one point, Leuven took a shot himself instead of passing it to Klaus, who is the striker who should be doing it because it's he has been so ineffective. And I, I, to defend our position earlier in this season, when we kept saying Klaus just needed someone, it truly looked that way. It truly looked that way. And I bet if we go back and look at those games, you could see Klaus was in position. Klaus was doing his best. He just had no one passing. Well, now you look at Right before Lubin came back to the last three or four matches that Lubin's been on the pitch, Klaus is With continually out of position. He's continually out of position. He's continually just running around, not being where he should, and getting those weird passes brought to him, and he just it just dumps into nothing. We really should not be trying to defend him anymore, especially when there's just a couple of shiny new toys coming in. He's just not doing his job. And I'm going to show you something here. Right? So this is the kicks. Oh, it's kind of blurring out on me. My bad. Oh, there we go. So you guys can see the, the shots here. The quick thing I was trying to point out here is that look at them. 
pretty much all their shots except for one that I'm seeing here was inside of our box. We let them into our home, which yeah. is that box. For us, I'm looking over half of our shots were outside of the box. Yeah. So what does that kind of tell you? Even the Apple announcers mentioned this, is that we were playing a lower block. We were being more defensive, more not quite parking the bus, but more towards that direction. The one thing that you usually see is we usually have a very high line. You know, our We're, first defensive action tends to be quite high. Our line plays typically high. This was a completely different strategy. And unfortunately, I don't think it worked. Yeah, I, to 100% it didn't work. We lost we lost <laughs> three to three nothing. Nothing. Good and, point. <laughs> yeah, but I, I can say that some of the, the high press that we saw, I saw in the first half, was pretty impressive to see in person as that was as it was happening like they were squeezing the, the the transition pretty early but then they got away from that it looked like and yeah you can see on the 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 spread that you showed that they were clearly able to just wander into the box you know we also did a lot of heavy lifting for mechanic uh, to try to say he's not that poor of a player and what i saw tonight every time that young man kicked the ball we don't know where it was going and then he would pout. It's just so I, I'm uh, going to defend him. This wasn't here, great, actually. No, I'm actually going to defend him here. So, and the reason why is because he did have a couple of big saves in the box that matter. But I do uh, agree I saw, with you. Yeah. Off offensively, I do agree with yes. you. I do think he was lacking, and especially when that's what you needed. And since he is a more offensive defender, if that makes sense. Yeah, he kind of failed at that aspect of it. Yep. And you're right. He, yeah. he yeah. typically likes kicking at the top of the box, and pretty Ooh. much every time, it just sails over. It's a wasted possession, yep. honestly. His defense, yeah, it was great. I think a couple a, a couple of players we've talked about the cat stood out. One player that I love seeing on the pitch is that man right, that right there. I love seeing Chris Durkin. I love seeing him out there in our uniform. And it's just you can tell which which one he is because his shorts seem to stop two inches off his waist. Like he's got my man. I worked for the Boys and Girls Club, and our director would say like any of the girls that wear the short shorts are so, ooh babies, uh, ooh baby. Yeah, his shorts are too, too short. Man, Durkin's got the ooh babies on. Durkin's got those little bitty <laughs> ass shorts on that stuff. They go all the way up his thigh. But he has such passion out there. My goodness, we. We are just so blessed to have that man on our team right now. And, like, he is a powerhouse. A couple of players I saw got bodied tonight. I saw Marcana get bodied. I saw Yarrow get bodied. I saw Klaus get bodied. Klaus got pushed around yes. a little bit tonight. Multiple Durkin did times. not get pushed around. It was yeah. interesting to see, like, Colorado came after our players. And they got, I mean, they got shoved around. Leuven got shoved around a little bit. But, like, Durkin wasn't getting shoved around. When Thor came out there as a late sub, he kind of got bodied up a little bit, but not Durkin. Man, Durkin and Kojima, they were both just stalwarts out there. It was really cool to see those cats actually out there putting in work. Oh, and by the way, like another good thing, like my daughter loves soccer. She loves, love, 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 love soccer. And she, when we, when we got to the supporter section, she was cheering loud. She knew when to jeer. She knew when to cheer. She knew when to kind of push them. She loved the music. She loved singing the songs because I listen to the those the the chants all the time. So she knows all the chants. And so when one uh. when one would start up, she would do it right with them. And that was super cool to see. But like she knew who Durkin was. She knew when to cheer for him. And you know, she never she stood the entire second half. She never wanted to go sit down. So like that was a really cool experience. And like the supporter section was really cool for her. You know, I joked to my wife that she got to hear some, she got some salty language. And my wife said, like, she doesn't hear from you anyway. No, <laughs> like, yeah, I guess so. But yeah, it's just, yeah. So uh, uh, when the team is in this kind of this losing space we're in, you would think that the stadium would turn really negative. And yes, it's really upsetting. The team's not doing well, but like leaving, Everyone seemed to be in high spirits still. Everyone still digs the fact that we have a team and it wasn't that bad. 
Now, Kansas City lost tonight, so we're still not yeah. we're we're not going to be piggybacked by the I guess jumped over by them. But like as we were leaving that Kansas City match when Kansas City blew the game, those fans were upset. Those fans were despondent. And from what I saw leaving the stadium tonight, we were still not. So like I I think our fans get it, but like the Germans are coming, right? Like reinforcements are on the way. And you know, I, I don't think it's it's going to be that bad. Like, again, like, yeah, Celio's I agree. out, Alms out, Ostrek's out. Like, Hebert's we, going to be gone for a couple of weeks still. Like, we got a lot of our players that are just gonzo, but we've got, so, we've got some reinforcements coming in. My, my conspiracy theory, by the way, is that I we, really think that we have Hartel signed because we, you didn't get rid of AZ Jackson, unless it was just amazing deal. And you were like, okay, I have to just do this because it's amazing deal. Yeah. But you also didn't get rid of him and Dewar without we having basically Hartel signed. My gut feeling is that they were waiting to announce it until tomorrow or Friday. And the reason why is because they probably anticipated that this was going to be a horrible game because fans, huh? are going to almost forget about this game because all we're going to do is talk about Hartel once he gets signed. And for good reason, because right. he's going to be a really good player. He's going to really change the complexion of this team. Realistically, he comes in. I, I think he's probably our second best player, maybe first best player, depending on how you want to quantify it. Like this, this guy's a pretty big potential signing once it's official, of course. Yeah. You know, we just, of my wife asked get me there. Right. My wife asked me like, why, they would get uh, rid of two players. I'm like, well, I think it's just because they, they, they've got this guy coming in. We already got one guy signed, and we have another guy coming in. Now, with AZ, I did, like, last year, his market value was, like, $1.4 million. And this year, his market value dipped a little bit. But clearly, Columbus approached St. Louis and, like, said they wanted him. So we got him. We were able to sell him for 600 what 600 600,000 and then with incentives it can be boosted up to about 900,000 so uh, those are players exactly. that he can earn so like we got him for just about his market value so like all the fans in St. Louis that were saying he was the worst thing ever put him down in city two or just cut him no this is why you hold on to a player <laughs> young like that he's a like he was on like the US men's national youth team like he is a solid yep. player and we were able to get his market value from a team not in our conference. So the only time we're going to see them is if from international competition or later in the playoffs. So, like, we were able to get a lot of money for him. Ultimately. And Ultimately. we just had to kick back a little bit to the team we got him from. I think Minnesota or something. Minnesota. So, like, that was Minnesota, yeah. And Minnesota basically traded him for a bucket of worms. Like, no, we got a lot out of him. Here's another thing that you're going to find Dewar, interesting. No, so. Yeah, so I, I was listening to Flyover, Matt Baker, and he was mentioning that actually we basically have a percentage clause for outside of MLS transfer. If he AZ ends up going to Europe and getting sold for however much money, we actually get a percentage of that. It might not be a huge percentage. I, I don't know what it is, but let's say it's 5%. Still... Like that's more performance based money that we could actually earn from this. And yeah, you know, if he goes over to Europe or he really kind of kicks it and he's like kicking in high gear and he turns out to be a great player, did we miss out? Yeah. But you got to remember in part, we're doing this because we're getting this guy, hopefully theoretically getting this guy in yeah. and it's going to be worth it. Ultimately. Ultimately. So, yeah. We'll see. And that's we'll hope, see tomorrow. You know. We'll Ultimate. see tomorrow if we end up hearing about the signing or on Friday, but that's my gut feeling. So, yeah. Anyways, yep. do you have any thoughts going into our Atlanta game on Saturday? On the, Man, the only thought I have is that uh, Tiago Amada will not be in that match. Oh, and I saw that Atlanta is sending out all the, 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 the Greek they have. That's amazing. Like, he's being shipped off too, so... They're going to be in a really hurt position on Saturday. Man, I don't know. I Tonight was one of the first times that I had a draw predicted. I thought we were going to – I thought we would draw 1-1. I don't even know. 
I don't even know how to handicap this next game. I don't want to come out and say they're going to lose again. But yep. from what I saw tonight, you know, it's just like, oh, okay. What I saw when we played the last losing team where we just came out flat-footed. I don't yep. what I, I don't know. But what I do know is that you can find us at BRB FanCast on all the socials. Come on if you want to join us. We may have a guest on our next our next broadcast, if you will, after the match. And maybe we'll have some more positive, fun stuff to talk about. But, like, I don't know. We'll say a, a 2-2 draw. I mean, I, I don't see this team winning. I don't. I don't see how they win. But I don't want to. I don't want to come out and say I think they're going to lose. I don't want to say I don't Fair. think they're going to lose. What about you? You know, uh, you know what we need to do is this team needs to consider the Salanta game as almost a play-in playoff game because yeah. we're getting to that point where if we just keep stringing these losses in late June, July before we get the reinforcements. Oh, well, yeah, guess what's going to happen? We're, we're going to be knocked off from the playoffs. I think they need to play the... this as a playoff game. They need to take it serious. They need to really go for it. I think if they do that, I think there's a chance of a 2-1 win. Otherwise, I, I think we're going to just see the same crap that we've been seeing. That's On my the... honest opinion. Yeah, they're all, they're all must-wins, aren't they? It's almost like magical. We have to win. Who would have thought that in competition you need to win in order to succeed well we're gonna have to I, it's just but yeah i don't i don't know where we get the the goals from where do we get goals from right now honestly i i think you're gonna have to change the top for a game maybe just to send a message yeah. maybe maybe Klaus just needs to clear his head to be honest maybe you just let him stay home for a night and oh you want the team take care of it sometimes yeah. you do see that sometimes sam wasn't even just on... need to Oh, he wasn't? Yeah. Sam wasn't even on the roster tonight. Wasn't even on the roster. <laughs> they had all these kids from City 2 come up, and on the, Sam wasn't there. Interesting. So, I don't know. I, I was looking well, for Sam to be to be put in for cost at some point. Sam wasn't even on the, on the super on the roster tonight. So, maybe we come out with a 4-4-2 or something on Saturday. We have Sam up there with Kojima. We'll see what happens. Super. Yeah. But... My goodness well, gracious. Guys, let, let's see what happens, and hopefully we come out with a winner at yep, super at the least a draw, and hopefully they treat yep. this more of like a playoff game, and hopefully we're talking about something a little bit more interesting. So on that yeah. note, we, of course, are Black, Red, and Blue with AJ and Steve, and we will see you next time. All for City? All for City, baby. Still, baby.